<laughs> you all right, Chad? I'm all right. <laughs> wow. Hello, everybody. This is episode 92 of This Week in Grip. It's me, Napalm Jed Johnson, along with Alan Hynek and James Rodriguez. Hey, question for you. Are you training for living legends? Then you got to check out the post at gripauthority.com, how to grip the legends anvil. Just made some tweaks in my technique, shared it with everybody there. You can join TGA today for just $1 for the next 30 days. Got some thoughts going out to Jesse Pinonen. He messaged me today and said he injured his middle finger when training with sandbags. Jesse and I were kind of racing to 225 kilograms pinch. He says, no worries about me hitting double 225s as I dislocated my middle finger pretty badly in the PIP joint as it got crushed by a 115-kilogram sandbag today. That's a big sandbag, so it's hard to hear that, Yessie, and I sure as heck hope that that thing gets back to 100% here very soon. I got a question for everybody listening. So get your typing fingers ready. This is something new. Who do you think will be the next lifter to clean the inch dumbbell? Write your answer in the comments section below and let us know who you think will be the next person to clean the inch dumbbell. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and please share the link with your other friends and grip as well as in any Facebook groups you're in, Instagram, etc. We We definitely appreciate it. And if you so haven't have a subscribed, question. one second, James, if you haven't subscribed, oh, sorry, sorry. then you missed a few videos this week, not only episode 91, which I think viewing of episode 91 was down a little bit last week, and I thought it was one of the best episodes that we've ever done, so make sure you go back and listen to that. And uh, also a couple of videos that came out last week, you can always count on your training, how often to train grip and forearms, and your training is your time for you. So go back, look at those videos, and be sure to subscribe. Gentlemen, now's the time. How is everything going? Give us an update. Alan said he's dealing with snow here in April. So uh, <laughs> It sucks. Yeah, we got hit all of a sudden. It probably got like almost four or five inches out there. It was terrible. That heavy, wet crap made things slick all kinds of vehicles in the ditch. It's just been a rough winter in general, but this one, this snuck up on us. We were hoping we were past it. So Dude, it was like take... 70, 75 degrees here uh, yesterday. Friday night, it was, cl- it was you know, mid-60s. We actually trained the stones. I got out there and trained stones with some of the guys from the gym, Evan, Brandon, and Dylan. It was the first time I've trained stones since at least 2015 or 2014. I, I can't remember. It was good to get out there, and naturally it rained as soon as we got out there and did it. But um, no, no snow out this way. So you you keep that, man. You can keep that. It's like uh, it's like uh, Wisconsin is becoming the new Norway in, or uh, Finland. I see, I see, uh, like Ardo's still doing the polar bear dips in the frozen lake, and um, I saw Carl Skelvik was was pressing something outside and had like 18 inches of snow that he was dealing with there. So. You can keep all that, man. You and Norway yeah. and Finland, take take I wonder, go ahead and hold on to that. I wonder if they only have the three seasons like what we have here in Wisconsin. You know, we've got winter, you know, flooding and drought, and then it's winter oh. again. Ah, we kind of skip see. everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like always that. miserable. <laughs> what do you got going on, James? You're driving, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're heading back from Virginia Tech, but uh, no, no snow. It's just uh, warm rain. You know that we've been dealing with. It's been very, uh, it's been very moist where we are. Uh, lots moist. of rain lately. Like yesterday, we it was just Bob and I at training yesterday, but it was, I mean, it was just torrential downpour. You couldn't get chalk to stick to anything. It was just sort of like you know, it was it was uh, almost a wasted day. You know, basically I just that's one. towel Bob high and PR. Towel got soaked. And then uh, and then when we left, I left training. And I felt something biting me. I had some kind of insect in my shirt that was a little bit pissed off at me. And that, you know, chewed on me for about a half hour before finally I, I was like, I called my wife and I was like, I think I got a tick on my shoulder. So, you know, because it just felt like something was just gnawing at me. 
So I'm like, I, I rip my shirt off in the car, and then my gas light is like blinking. I got like nine miles, more than nine miles from my house. So <laughs> I got this, whatever this is, eating me, and I got to like get off and get gas. So I get gas, and I'm at the gas station. I just told this guy, I said, hey, look, I need you to look at my back for me. And he was like, all right, take a look. And he said, he says, nah, man, he goes, whatever was on you is gone. He says, but you got some big welts on your back. So we don't know if it was a spider or a wasp or something. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, suffice to say, yesterday's training was just, it was just bad. It was just all around bad because it's just been wet here, very wet. So, hmm. But I, I would rather deal with wet than deal with snow. So my <laughs> apologies, Alex. Can you, can you imagine being so desperate to get that thing off your back that when you pull into the gas station, you just grab one of those squeegees and just start scrubbing like you're in the shower? Yeah. Well, you know what I did? I took, I took my shirt kind of like, and, I, and I, made, I, like, I like scrunched it all together almost like a towel, and I started like, like just, just rubbing it. had one hand over my head, one behind my back, trying yeah. to rub by where that insect was. I know and, the feeling. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm driving. Like you want to lay it out on some yeah. concrete or something. <laughs> Yeah, it just kept repetitively, like, repeatedly biting me. But it looked like mm-hmm. wasp bite, so it was probably just a wasp or something. But that really sucks when you're driving, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't reach it, so. so I had yeah, to quit. Yesterday was, what's that? I, I had to quit driving with my windows down and my arm out the window because I'll be damned if I wouldn't suck up everything that, like, every segmented insect you could imagine would fly up my sleeve and then sting me at least 13 <laughs> times. You know, it was, it yeah. was absolutely terrible, <laughs> So, which sucks because I really like having the window down, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually yeah. I know somebody who actually got into a terrible car accident because there was a spider in her car. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. It was like, this thing is dangerous. It's way more dangerous than me driving this 3,000 pound machine into a telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. I got a story like that. I had JC in the back seat here like a week or two ago, and she starts screaming, ah, ah. So naturally, I'm assuming there's a spider. Like, that's the kind of scream that I make when I see a spider. And <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping the car, I'm pulling over. I'm like, what? What is it? What is it? A moth. She saw a moth. <laughs> She had that kind of reaction to a moth, so my God, oh I don't know what's going to happen when when there's a little spider in there? Well, some of those moths can get pretty pretty big, man. They look no, like dude. Like no, dude, no, no. This, this, this was, was like, like a little one. <laughs> yeah, this was like the size of the metal thing on the top of a pencil. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever seen? I don't even know what they call them, but some of those moths have it's damn near like a six inch wingspan on them. They're terrifying. Sure. They look like butterflies, <laughs> yeah. but they're freaking, they're crazy. I can yeah. imagine the noise that I'd make if one of those was by me. Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the scariest insect you ever saw, guys? Not spiders. Not spiders and, and all that stuff, like the insect. If I get one flying around in the vehicle with me, it's a dragonfly. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I just well, can't. I, I, I hate them. They just scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> So, they have suck, you though. guys seen those 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 uh, wasps? I don't know if they're wasps or hornets that come around when the cicadas are around. The cicada oh, killing, cicadas. And whatever those things are, they're huge. I mean, they're just. I mean, it, it is it is like a, a wasp or a hornet that got into like Larry Wheel's stash or something. I mean, it's like it, it, it just they grow to four times the size. I mean, they're just these humongous. And they, I, evidently they don't bother people at all. Like, they won't sting you or anything. But I've had them in my garage when I'm lifting before, and that's, that's troubling. That's a, that's a troubling one. You know, down here we see black widows, like, all the time, and they love our house. So I used to have them under my picnic table, and, and I see them in the garage once in a while when I'm working out. But they, they, they really don't bother you, like, you know. So, so it's, not, it's, it's not that big of a deal. But we had one incident one time that was hilarious. And I, I don't know if you guys have seen my dog, Vanella, the uh, Great Pyrenees. Mm-hmm. Have oh, you yes. seen pictures of her? Okay. Yes. I don't, so, maybe. So it's a hot summer night, and I have, I have the, the back door open, the screen door open, and all of a sudden in flies, I mean, it, it, 
it looked like a praying mantis that flew. And I, I don't know if praying man, I don't know oh. anything about bugs, but it was the size of a praying mantis, and it flew in, and it landed near her water bowl, and she ran upstairs. What color I mean, was she it? She was gone. It was green. <laughs> green. Yeah, that's our that's our watchdog. That's our giant, you know, Pyrenean they are, yes. mountain dog. Our great Pyrenees that. Yeah. Sees an insect and runs upstairs, leaves me to die, you know. But I just put him <laughs> in a little bowl and put him outside, and he was cool. But, but yeah, he was scary looking, though. He was a, he was a big dude. So, well, this week in insects. Have, the reason I asked <laughs> what color is, like, the insect I was going to say, it's called a helgramite. You fish with them. Oh, you fish with oh the I've heard, yeah. Stage. But um, they call them clippers, um, like, down by the river. They call them clippers. Ah. <laughs> um, okay. And it's the actual name is Hellgramite, like Hell, Gram, Mite. So, um, if you said brown, I would have thought it might have been a Hellgramite that you saw because the adult form yeah. of of Hellgramite is a pretty scary bug. And uh, like Alan said, something about like a, like the giant moths. This thing does have some traits of like a large. Uh, a large moth. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Those are gross. Well, this looked like a flying dinosaur. You know, it looked like a pterodactyl <laughs> oh. landing in my kitchen. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, it was pretty funny, uh, though. She I, went, I, I mean, she knocked her water bowl over and everything. Like, she just, she was scurrying to get up and was just like, peace. She was gone. She was like, I am out, running up so the stairs. I'm like, wow. Instead of fly swatters at your place, then, you just have, like, a tennis racket hanging up? Yeah, you One of those babies like come that. in. Yeah. Have you guys ever oh seen the electrified tennis rackets? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. i got to get one of those. <laughs> it's like an electric chair for bugs, but, you know, you hit them with it. So. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I came home after getting eaten up, and then I showered, and then I was like, you know what? I want to lift some more. So I went and did uh, front squats and deadlifts and, you know, just got some kind of training in because yesterday was just a dead mission when it came to training at Bob's. There's right. no grip training at all going to happen. So, hmm. well, that's too bad. That sucks when weather ruins stuff. No doubt. But I, I did get a chance to try out uh, the, the two. Well, I got three grip genie handles. I got a chance to try out their wrist wrench and their. Um, uh, I think they just call it the rolling thing or something, a rolling thingy. It's like a two and a half inch, and it's like a really hard rubber grip on it, and it's got ball bearings, and the thing just spins for days. It's like, you know, I got a chance to try it out. Handle got wet. It was hard to chalk just because it was raining so hard, but uh, I think we ended up somewhere like in the mid-150s on it before it just started like really sliding too much and it was raining too hard. But a pretty good handle. I'm gonna on a on a on a dry day. I'm gonna compare it to the uh, the Crusher and uh, the Trilobite because I have two and a half inch of both of those. So nice. Cool. Yeah. You have been waiting to hear some feedback on those. Yeah, uh, wrist wrench. I can tell you the Grip Genie wrist wrench. Do not get the handle wet because those finger grooves are made with like a type of tape. And when it was dry, it was fine. Those finger grooves didn't slide at all. When it got wet, and it was, like, abnormally wet yesterday. It was, like, driving torrential rain for a couple hours. We were outside. Uh, I don't know if it's glued down or whatever the deal is, but the, uh, it started to unravel. And now it's just, like, it's just in shambles. So, so yeah. So it, I just I have the handle, but the finger grooves are gone. So... Hmm. But, uh, yeah, so don't get it wet if you bought uh, Grip Genie's version of the wrist wrench. I've never Public heard of service anything enough. like that. Um, yeah. So it must be just an adhesive that uh, sticks on there? Yeah, and the he- adhesive is fine. Like, if it's dry, I mean, it's it's doing its job. And it's got kind of a cushion to it. It's kind of spongy, you know. It's actually, uh, it, it, you know, I mean, it's it's not... It's kind of cool. I'd like to do something like that on a on a on a larger handle and see, uh, you know, if there's if there's if you can get the same sort of purchase on it. 
it was it was good. Like I, I liked training with it. And then it just got really wet and it just came undone. So so if you have one, don't train outdoors with it. <laughs> you know. I actually didn't know they made a wrist wrench. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. interesting. It's about it's about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. So I'll have to measure it, but I think it's somewhere in that range. You know. Well, okay, so and then I was, something a little smaller. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it's a, for someone, it, like, my fingers barely connect on it, so maybe it's like an inch and three quarters. So okay. I think it's somewhere around there because I can touch my thumb to my middle finger around it. So it's probably somewhere around there. Sure. Nice. What kind of, what kind of material was the, um, the, the sleeve itself made out of? Was it like the original wrist wrench? It was more or less a yeah, PVC? Yeah, it's like a okay. PVC kind of uh, material. Right. And then they gave me this uh, cone training handle, which I think Luke sells those, doesn't he? Doesn't Luke sell the cone train, like the cone handles? Um, a cone? Does, does he make a cone handle? Oh, he, he was for sure. He had one that was made out of, of wood for a period of time. I don't know if it's still on his site or not. Yeah, I've seen those, but okay. I thought they were more like an arm wrestling tool. I, I wasn't I wasn't aware of him selling a, a grip training tool. I mean, but he, he's really increased his store uh, by okay. yeah. pounds. So I, I I could have easily lost track of some of the things that he's had in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So I had a chance to catch up with yeah Tom and Juji on on Wednesday, and uh, they were nice enough to give me some of their handles and and you know we talked to. We talked a little bit about their grippers, too. I don't know if you guys want to hear about it. Yeah, definitely want to hear about interested. it. I see they are popping up around around uh, places on videos on Instagram. So, yeah, I think that would be yeah. great to hear about those. And and they're about to actually uh, come out with a new line of grippers. I mean, it's going to be the same type of grippers, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same type of idea, the different colors and the different springs you know, uh, up through, like, I think there's seven different uh, uh, strengths, seven different uh, uh, types of springs on them. Um, but they're going to actually improve the gripper all the way around. Because when I was talking to Tom, he was telling me that he, he really liked the Baraband grippers and the Tedding grippers. And, you know, he, he wants to go with a manufacturer here in the U.S., most likely because they're, they're probably going to be searching for a new manufacturer soon uh, within, you know, the next few months or so. So so it could be a, a you know, the, the Grip Genie grippers that are out right now, you know, could be, uh, it could be rare in the future because it looks like they're going to be uh, made in a whole new way by a, a whole new manufacturer coming up pretty soon. But he was saying, like, he liked the, the springs on the heading grippers and he liked the, Handles the, the aggressive knurling on the uh, bare band grippers, so so it, I would look for something like that. But I think they're probably going to keep the thinner handles, the style that they have right now. So, and I was explaining to them that that's you know it's a pretty good style gripper to train beyond the range because the the handles are so thin that you have to crush them together so much so that if you're you know like I mean I'm not into serting on grippers or anything, but for those of you that are. You know, if you do train beyond the range, you know, it does tend to help. So, What, what yeah, size handles did they go with? <clears throat> yeah, tell us, tell us a lot of details, James, because I, I stood near them, didn't grab any of them at the Arnold, and I haven't seen yeah. them since. So I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in hearing details. Well, when I was talking to Tom, you know, a lot of what it seemed like was, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't want to do, like, the – he, he didn't want to do the grippers like, like Iron Mind where, you know, there's so much variability. Like you could have a three that's rated in the 130s and a three that's rated in the 160s. You know what I mean? So, so he, he wanted to do something where the grippers were, you know, mounted at the same height and try to get them as close to each other as possible to try to, you know, to make sure that they're not so much different. Um, but uh, they went with a manufacturer in China that they had a good relationship with, but that I guess is certainly uh, recently, I should say, uh, fell through. And um, they're going to be looking for someone locally. I actually hooked them up with uh, Matt Cannon this week because he really wanted to talk to, to Cannon. And I don't know if that was to 
to sell uh, products through Canon's uh, site or, or to have Canon rate his products or, or maybe even just to get insight about manufacturers. But, but I know that they're looking to change manufacturers. I know they sold a lot of grippers. That of all the things that they developed for Grip Genie, that the grippers are the things that are selling the most. So, and uh, oh, they really? certainly have, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's interesting oh. because we were we were talking about, uh, you know, sort of the the what the mainstream tends to think of when they think of grip strength. And I think you know guys like us, we're we're so enmeshed in in, in you know the community that you know sometimes it's hard to think of what basic like the people outside of of the world of grip or strength in general, you know, think yeah. about what grip strength is. And, and evidently, you know, what he was saying was grippers, grippers, grippers. Like a lot of what he gets is people who want grippers, wrist rollers, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so, that, that, would, that would make yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, you summed it, it up it, pretty good. <laughs> it, I'm definitely it, inside it, the box on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. I mean, because, I mean, it's, it's funny because, like, I'm not a big gripper guy. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, right. I'll, me too, yeah. I'll train them if there's an event that comes up with them, but that's only like I'll train them for maybe two months before the event, if that. You know, and I know some people are, and it's nothing against them. I mean, it's just I'm not a gripper guy. When I think of, of my own feats of strength that I want to do, you know, they're usually related to thicker bar or to um, uh, pinch-related feats. So, so Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, he said that a lot of, and because there's such a main, they're so mainstream at this point, you know, so they have so many followers at this point that, you know, people just are buying up their grippers like crazy. So. Yeah, yeah. No, that fits. That fits. You know, I'd always just seen them pushing like the the hub in particular and the rolling yeah. handle and even the pinch blocks and stuff. So I figured that would have been a bit more of a hit, but what you say, the, the grippers are always the most recognizable part of, of any of this. When you say grip, that's yeah. the first thing that ever comes to someone's mind, so it fits. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, too, I mean, I think a lot of people, when they think about grip strength, they think about shaking hands with somebody, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, handshakes, there's a lot going on psychologically in terms of the development of, you know, some kind of a dominance hierarchy, you know, the Absolutely. firmness of your your handshake, you know what I mean? So yep. so a lot of people equate that to squeezing, and squeezing alone. So they think, well, if I squeeze grippers, I'll have a firm handshake, and and that will give me some kind of edge psychologically, you know. But, uh, yep. but no, I mean, they were it, – it's not that they were unhappy with the quality of the grippers that they got. They just They just thought that they could improve upon it a little bit more. Um, by by having you know uh, more consistent spring mounting and you know more aggressive knurling and you know and and all that so because that's the, evidently that's what Tom is looking for he wants it to be well, the best gripper out there that's good that they did that because I, I like it when people you know if if they if they recognize an issue or they didn't find what specifically they were looking for that they that they move on with the process and they try to make it yeah. better and they don't just stay. Because you see so many places, it's like once they've once they've they've gone that route. For example, it would have been easy for those guys to to make these grippers and then just stay just stay married to what they had, you know. Yeah. And I like I like seeing the improvement in those those running type changes. That way, it's a that, that's a that's a good thing that they're doing. So I can definitely appreciate. I agree. That. So. Yeah, I agree. I think you know wanting to have a very consistent product is. Uh, you know, it's it's about as important as selling a good service. You know, you have to you have to be consistent whatever it is you're selling, and and I think that's what they're they're trying to do is to make their products as consistent as possible. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, just from talking to those guys the other day, you know, they as much as you know they're involved in just about any kind of strength or fitness related endeavor you can think of. Those guys seem like they're they're you know really committed. To, to to grip strength and developing grip strength tools. So so yeah. I, I look for grip genie to be uh, to be growing even more. You know, because one thing cool. they do have is a huge following. So, oh, absolutely. So that helps. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. So what but, else about these grippers? That I was curious. 
when you were talking about the handle thickness, I didn't realize they weren't dealing with the with the standard. You know how Baraban uses like a they use a very fat handle, for example. Yeah. The other ones we deal with, they're like typically around three quarters of an inch, I think, for the most part. So did they go with like what we saw on some of the Teddings, like that five eighths inch, or where did they? Yeah, land? I would say it's I would say it's somewhere around that. I mean, I I didn't have anything to measure them or anything, but but I would say it was probably about five eighths. Um, well, those are going to be I mean, crazy early, useful uh, then. Yeah, the, that's the, the that's early a great. Needs, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say the knurling isn't that that uh, that 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 aggressive on it, but it's not bad. It's not like it's you know it's not like it slips out of your hand or anything, you know. And and the heavier grippers that they have are really, I mean, they're like hard three to I'd say you know hard three five, you know. I mean they're 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 pretty. They got some well, good. Some pretty beastly <laughs> springs, and and they're they're hard to close, and I don't think the small handles make it any easier. So so they're going to be yeah. challenging for a lot of guys. I mean, I say nice. that, but you know who knows? Maybe somebody like Chez could just you know grab their hardest stripper and close it right out of the box. I don't know, but but you know they're going to be challenging for a lot of the top level guys. We'll put it that way. Well, yeah, especially you know with the when you talk about the the thinner handle size, I think that's going to be. I would think some of those guys would really like that. Actually, that's a different, just a different training means. You know, it, yeah. it just I would think it makes some of those other grippers just feel easier. Really, you know, it's beyond the range. It's a different, a different jig. Sure. Some of those thinner handles. I mean, they kind of bite a little bit. So I would think it's an advantage. You know, assuming they get some of their, some of those issues they're working on. You know, debugged a little bit. That sounds like a great way to go. Yeah, I'll be curious how they start too. rating. Wait, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be curious how they how they start rating. You know, if, if Canning starts getting a hold of a bunch of these, and and how we yeah. can fall in line with the other things, if they make some good in betweeners, and that'd be real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I you know just just because him and and and, and Matt Cannon wanted to hook up, I mean, there could be uh, could be something like that. Like maybe he's gonna you know get some kind of you know ratings from Matt or or input or, you know, form some kind of business relationship or something. I mean, I'm, I'm speculating, but, uh, yeah, that would be, that would be good. That would be very cool to see, uh, see where they rate and how consistent they are, you know, yeah. but, uh, I know what Tom had said was that, uh, you know, they, they're holding up, the grippers are holding up, but that's not enough. You know what I mean? Like you said, there's, you know, the, the customer satisfaction has been very good, but they want to go beyond customer satisfaction and and essentially create the best possible hand gripper. So, so I think that's cool. I I appreciate that sort of diligence from, from, from people. It's like, rather than saying, you know, it's that whole idea of good is the enemy of great. You know, it's like this, these are good, but I want them to be great. So, so let me uh, find a way to improve upon them even further, which, yeah, you always appreciate that from a company. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, did I hear something? Are those springs, are they wound the other way? Uh, the, uh, just, what, the grip genie ones? Yeah. I could have swore I heard something like that. Like they were wound like the way the left turn grippers were. Maybe that was just somebody talking smack out of mine. I don't know. No, you might be right. I didn't notice it, to be honest with you. I mean, that's one okay. of the things you think I would. Um, yeah, I could be I way off on that. I just thought somebody... I thought I saw something about that. I'm, I have no familiarity with these at all. I've seen pictures, but I hadn't studied yeah. them close. But that's just something I thought popped up. Oh. Well, I know okay. Gary Stewart bought, like, a whole bunch of them. But uh, I don't think I'll be seeing Gary for a few weeks. Uh, when I do get a chance to, to get a hold of them, though, I'll definitely check the, 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 the springs. I could actually just ask Gary, you know, if the springs are left-turn springs. But, but yeah, mm-hmm. he... Um, Gary's got them all, and that was my first exposure to them, actually, was to, to playing around with Gary's, other than the one test gripper that uh, Juji had at this place, like, back in October, or Jan- no, January, actually. Yeah, when I was over there with Devin, they were filming that thing with Devin. So, so yeah, um, now they have, a, they have a line of them, and, you know, look for it to improve. Yeah, right, right. Cool. Now, are those available individually? I thought when they first when they first took off, I thought a lot of their stuff was bundled up. 
Did they break it that's out? That's a good, that's so a good question. That's a good question. I'm not sure if they are. Like, uh, literally, like, I, I went on the site one time because I was going to buy uh, the wrist wrench thing off of them. And, you know, Tom told me, you know, don't be silly. You're not buying anything off of us. We'll just give it to you. You oh, know, beautiful. which was cool. <laughs> that, was, that, was, yeah. that was cool. You know, but I told him, I said, well, you know, I want to support you guys or whatever. And, you know, but... Uh, but yeah, he gave me uh, he gave me one of those, and uh, and and, and I, I really like that that rolling handle of theirs. I do. I just I want to see how it compares to those, to specifically the Crusher, uh, and and it does. I mean, it rolls like crazy. It really, man. Like you can, I could, I took it and I just kind of spun it and watched it, and it just sat there and rolled for probably five or six seconds before it stopped. So, sure. So it's a, sure. It's a, yeah, just have to figure out how to get uh, chalk to apply to that that rubber handle. Well, yeah. So when you're saying it's a rubber handle, are you talking? Is, is it is it is it a true like hard rubber, or is it something along the lines of? Uh, are you familiar with the, the Country Crush handles? Like we we talked about, didn't I talk about it recently? It's more like yeah. Uh, I've I've never used a Country Crush. Okay. Okay. What I will say is that it, it's the kind of rubber that has absolutely no give whatsoever. Okay. All right. All it's right. It's like, you know, like the, the wheels on a forklift kind of rubber. You know what I mean? Like the, Oh, sure. The sure. Really, yeah, yeah. So okay. Well, yeah, then uh, it, it might suck to get very heavy to that then. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. It's not like you can squish it, get a little bit of, you know. Get it to get it to bend or, or give a little bit. It doesn't at all. It's it's just right. solid as a rock. So nice. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at some of those. I had checked on their website when they when they first launched, and that was my one. The one thing I didn't care for was that to get like the the hub, for example. Like I had to get the hub and the loading pin and all kinds of other crap that I just didn't need. <laughs> so, oh, okay. uh, so I just never pulled the trigger on it. You know, I was just thinking for comparison's sake, but I, I mean, I, I definitely don't need any more loading pins. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was my hang up, you know, it was something like that, the little package concept. But, uh, if they, yeah. if they, if they break that up, y'all you know, take another, I'll take another look at it. The handle sounds nice. So well, that's cool about the, the grippers too, especially. Yeah. I don't know if they're breaking them up and selling them separately now, but I can certainly ask. I can find out for you if that's a plan, if they're not doing it, you know, yet. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and I haven't used their hub yet either. I think I want to say one of the guys, whether it was Gary or Scott, ended up getting their hub, but I haven't had a chance to play with that yet. So. Did any of you, okay. did either of you get a chance to play with the, the hub if you haven't bought one, uh, purchased one? No, I haven't, um, I haven't seen them, heard dimensions or anything. I've been kind of curious if they, if they stuck with like what Iron Mind's doing or if they kind of picked their own dimension or, or where they went with it. Yeah, I, I have okay. no clue about texture or anything. So I've been waiting to hear about okay. a lot of this stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I, did I, did Jed ever say, Jed, are you there? Or did Jed yeah, I'm here. Off? I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. I've had a couple of phone issues. I'm, I apologize. But um, okay. Luke was going to bring the handle down. We didn't We didn't end up using it the other day. So I oh, yeah. haven't had a chance to use it, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Did you uh, Did you get you get one of their hubs or no? No. No. I, I actually haven't gotten anything, anything in the gym. In the gym. Uh, Luke, um, Luke had the... Uh, Luke had, Luke the, had other the other handle, handle up to his, his place. place. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, so so anyway, I had a chance to, to, to get the, their handles, take a look at their grippers, like their new line of grippers, and, and uh, uh, I filmed a, a, a little uh, session with uh, Juji Mufu that I didn't think was going to get filmed. I showed up with a neck beard and the T-shirt I slept on the, in, the, in the night before. <laughs> and because he, he's like, hey, he says to me, he's like, hey, he's like, can you come by and, and help me get ready for this event? Because he's pulling Devin Laird's uh, bottom eight event up in uh, in Canada. And I was like, yeah, sure, man. So I come over and then he's like, oh, we're just waiting on Tom. And I was like, for what? And he's like, oh, we're filming it. I was like, you couldn't let me know? Like you couldn't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
not that I would have looked much different without a neck beard and a T-shirt that I didn't sleep in, because I would have certainly wore a, a T-shirt anyway. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it was, just, it was interesting how it all kind of worked out. But those guys gave me that. And then uh, same day, I, I, I get notified from uh, Scott Johnson that they have York Roundhead dumbbells at used gym store. I go up there. I get a set of 85 and 90 pound York Roundheads, USA stamp, but York Roundheads in, I mean, as mint condition as you can. They were awfully shiny. Yeah. Oh. They'd never been. Nobody would ever done anything with those. Otherwise, smear a coat of wax on them, yeah. it seemed like. <laughs> yeah, those were yeah. immaculate. And oh, they, I couldn't and believe they that. gave them to me for a steal because I know I collect them. So they gave them to me for a steal. So it was, uh, it was a great gym grab day, you know. <laughs> free handles, yeah. oh. almost free dumbbells, practically free dumbbells. So, so it was a good Wednesday for sure. You know, speaking yeah, of York, I'm down to uh, – I, I have moved all of those um, legacy blobs except for one. I, have, I still have five in the gym, but three are going to better. And then I have my 150, and then um, there's a 145. So if anyone wants one for a decent price, they better hurry up because that's all that's, all that's left right now. Is it cut or is it pre-cut? No, they're all cut, brother. I, I cut all of them that day with Luke. We're, we're just, you know, we're Jets and Sharks, Jed. We're on opposite yeah, sides of the fence here. You know, know, it's funny. Scott, Scott calls me the president of the York Dumbbell Preservation Society. That's you know? cool. Dude, listen, I, uh, yeah, I, I want to say the year was like 2008. I was at the yep. clinic that I'm at every single year, a strength clinic. A guy named Jerry Shrek from Bucknell comes up to me, makes this proposal that I buy – all of the dumbbells from his weight room, all Yorks. I believe all Fat Man Yorks. Oh, and wow. he, he quoted a price like 500 bucks. And I'm telling you they were from like five pounders up to 100s for 500 bucks. I was like, oh, wow. What? The next year I see him, he goes, I can't believe you never came and got those dumbbells. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, I talked to you last year. I wanted to sell you all those dumbbells, but I needed to sell them to you for at least 500 bucks. and you said you were going to come get them. I never heard from you. I had absolutely no clue what the man was talking about. To this day, I have no recollection of that initial conversation. Um, like, this absolutely This has been happening to you for a while, Jeff, this memory stuff. Uh, uh, gotta, yeah, it's, it's nothing new. We've got to get you to a neurologist. I'm worried about you. It's like early uh, onset Alzheimer's. I mean, when does that start? <laughs> no, it's a, you're way well, early. 42. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, you're in the clear, Jed. You're just uh, forgetful. So anyway, okay. wow. You well, that's a sucky him. thing to so forget. Did he sell them? I'm sorry? Did he end up selling them? I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. Oh, let me guess. It, it was one of those deals where he got tired of waiting for you, so he had some guy come in with a chop saw and throw him in a dumpster. I, uh, like I, when you're... Dude, let me tell you something. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> just, just that horror story like you told me about your gym equipment that time. Couldn't yes. believe it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I did end up Walking. getting one. I did end up getting one hundred pound dumbbell from him. He saved me one. And I did not okay. cut it up. It's still intact. And I have. Good for you. I have a. Com uh, yes, I have a complete one hundred pound. <laughs> fat man as well that someone sent me in trade for like a lifetime membership to the grip authority.com so uh i have actually got two full 100 pound dumbbells and i just ended up watching a video someone left a comment on it from like six years ago uh where i i clean and press those dumbbells for a single so um I, I I don't cut them all up, dude. I don't cut all of them up, but I cut a lot of them up, most of them, most of them, uh, to be accurate. Yeah. You're you're. But all the ones that I just bought, all the ones I just bought in in the end, at the end of February, yes, the first chance I got, cut, 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 cut. All that's left is the handles. You guys are just psychos. <laughs> 
I don't, I don't consider that so horrible on legacies personally. The, the other ones, yeah, you know, they should be, they shouldn't be all reduced to glitter, you know, but the, oh, but the legacy, but the legacy. yeah, you know, I just, I don't know. They're like the, they're like the redheaded stepchild in my opinion, you know, they're just, they're just so oh, different. My gosh. I don't know. That's just, and they're all too light. Life. James, they're all too light. I don't know if you know that, but all of them are too light. Like, and not, not only, like, I have overweight ones. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, all's not a good word. I shouldn't. I shouldn't use. I shouldn't use words like that. But almost all of them are are, yeah. are like 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 my I've heard that my also, the. Yeah. Alan, do you know that the? Now let me get my information straight here. I'm not sure if it's the half 140 or the half 145. You sent me the half 145, correct, Alan? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I believe it's the one you sent me. So the one that you sent me is two kilos lighter than the one that I sent Thomas Larson. That's amazing. Well, that two is amazing. kilos, 4.4 yeah, 4 the, pounds. The, the one that um, yeah. I think the one I sent you, I mean, and, and, and I, I know it was light, um, but I thought it wasn't, I mean, it was like 71, 72 pounds or something like that, wasn't it? It it wasn't. It's, I know it wasn't um, true. I, yeah, I I I don't recall what the what the weight is right off. Well, then he, and it boy, could then be the one forty. Yeah, I, it could be. It could be uh, the, the more accurate. It could be the one forty that uh, that Nate Browse sent me. That is okay. that is that light, but it's one of those. It's one of those. Okay. Um, but it's two kilos. How? How is that possible to be two kilos? And all the ones that I got were light. In that big load, well, all of the ones that I got were light. I can tell you that my 135 weighs 135.8, and I want to mm -hmm. say my 115 weighs 115.4, but mm -hmm. the 135 is certainly in balance. Like when I've had it over my preacher curl bench, you can feel – one side is definitely heavier than the other. And the first time I actually went to curl it, I was like, whoa, this is weird. You know, because when I, when I build a dumbbell to curl myself, I make sure that it's within 0.1 pounds on either side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'll weigh yeah. the sides individually so that it's as close to even as possible. Not just like sure. throw a 25 on this side and a 25 on that side. And, you know what I mean? Because they can weigh more. I'll weigh oh. the weights and then build the dumbbell yeah. that way. But this 135, sure. I slung it over, and all of a sudden it started, like, whipping over to the right side, like, you know, like like going after my pronator, and I was like, oh, whoa, what is this? You know what I mean? So it's, I would guarantee there's one side that if you were to cut it, it would weigh considerably more than the other on that mm. belt. But no one's ever going to cut it, so we'll never know. <laughs> because as the anointed president of the York Nation Society, I can tell you I love it. that even though it's a legacy bell and it's okay to be uh, prejudiced against those, I'm going to preserve it. She's going to stay. We're going to treat her right. Not like you nice. ordering tax. <laughs> I like it. That's awesome. <laughs> You'll have to give us a well, rundown you got... on your collection sometime. Yeah, we'll um, have to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, right now, the only ones I'm missing are 95s. Um, I'm missing uh, 55, 60s, and 65s to have uh, a set all the way up to um, 100. And then I'll have, at that point, I'll have the 115 and the 135 as well. So. How many? You're missing two 95s or just one? Two ninety fives. I have two oh, okay. ninety fives. And and my I thought see. is when I when I complete my set, like the hex seventy fives, eighties, and the hex nineties, ninety fives, and maybe even my my hundred that I have, I would I would probably cut them up and save one block weight and then sell the others. So but uh sure. I don't know, I might just sell them in packs, who knows? So you have forty oh. fives from York? Uh forty five uh pound dumbbells? Dumbbells? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have a set of forty five pound dumbbells from York also. Um and speaking with James Fuller, he said that they might be waxed. 
uh, I guess they would sometimes fill in the part that said York with wax, so when they cast them, it didn't say York in them or something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Is yeah. that what they mean yeah. when they use that term waxed? I always wondered that. Yeah. I believe and so. And never yeah, bothered that's... doing the digging. Okay. Yeah. Like the mm-hmm. wax weeder plates, if you've ever seen those. Yeah. That's what they mean by wax. I, I have a couple of bun uh, dumbbells, too. i got like uh, 25 and 30. And then I have uh, globes at 70, 75, and 280s. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the, those are my prized possessions. I have my, my cool. dumbbell rack. And the very nice people that use Gym Store uh, gave me a great discount on an old York dumbbell rack, too, three tiers. So, so those, are my, those are my babies. Nice. I shower them with love and affection, and will never <laughs> cut them. Sure, sure. So that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's run down some feats that we might have seen this this week, guys. Uh, I'll just give James Fuller another shout out. He actually found uh, a set of twenty kilogram York plates. I think oh, he yeah. said it's like the only ones he's ever found. I thought that was pretty I saw cool. that. Yeah, I saw him playing with those hubs. Those were really cool. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I didn't actually know that, that, that those even existed. So that was... No. Yeah, that was, and they were in great shape. So he, uh, he's got quite the source for that stuff. I'm not sure if they're the same plates, that I, but I know Scott Johnson has got a set of York 20-kilogram plates as well with a nice hub on them. I could probably get a picture of those and send those over to you at some point, but I know I've played with those hubs before. Those are, uh, oh, that's those cool. are pretty cool plates. Yeah. Do they feel different, the hub, compared to a um, 45? Uh, oh God, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I, I know okay. like it, it really depends on the generation of plate. Like some of those Yorks, and, and, and somebody out there would know better than me, but I want to say the third generation – is the one with the really sloped hub. Would you guys know that? I, I don't, no. Okay. Well, I know Scott would know, and, and James Fuller would absolutely know. You know, James would be able to probably describe in detail, you know, the, the, the slope of the hub on every York plate ever made. So. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah I'm, not, I'm not too positive myself. Well, I've seen I've seen 35s and 45s hubs, and I, I, I I'm not going to say that all of them had the slopes, but like those older generation plates definitely had slopes. Um, what was what was the full question that you said, James? Because I actually dropped my phone. I need to train my grip a little bit better. <laughs> well, just uh, the the you know the difference in the generation of plates in terms oh. of how much the slope is. Yeah. Oh. I thought they were. I, I, thought they were I all wanted to say. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. I thought they were all pretty similar, but I could be wrong. Oh no, you might be right. Yeah, you might be right. I just know that the early generation, they are very sloped. And I want to say Scott's 45s were third generation. I'd have to ask him about those 20 kilogram plates that he had, because um, they had a good bump, they had a good plate on them. I mean, a good uh, hub on them. They might be bumper plates. Now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. But, oh, uh, interesting. But, yeah. Cool. How about uh, some of the feeds that you guys saw over the last week? So, since I'm driving, I don't have, like, access to it. But there was a guy who walked the Denny Stones this week, I guess, further than they had been walked in forever. Did you guys get that, that guy's name? I think Jerome Bloom had, had tagged us individually in a video of, of this guy uh, uh, walking the stones. I did see that video. I didn't remember the name. Was it on Instagram or was it on Facebook? Because I'll try to dig it up real quick. He, he tagged us on Facebook, but I want to say it was an Instagram post. And I remember looking at the Instagram post and – like not seeing the guy's name because he had like a handle, some kind of Instagram handle. 
But he's a big fella, and he was walking the uh, Denny Stones across the street. So, but it evidently, it was the furthest they've been walked in like a century or something. Oh so. wow! Interesting. I I I saw I was tagged in some stuff, but I'm I've had just a a crazy week, so I haven't been able to stay on top of a lot of a lot of things. So yeah, it sounds like it sounds like, it sounds like an excuse there, Alan. All right. that? You're never too busy for grip. You're never too busy <laughs> yeah. for grip. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you I'm digging guys, but I am just not I'm just not seeing it. I'm just, I'm just not seeing it happening. Well you gotta you gotta fill me in on this um this whole next person to clean the inch thing. Would somebody Somebody drop a challenge privately to you or something, and that's where it's coming from. Because I had a name pop right into my head, right out of the gate. But I did too. That's why I went to interrupt. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I had a feeling. Guys, yeah, was did Lane Snook ever do it? Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yeah. It's okay. So I found. I uh, just hold that thought, Alan, and I'll come back to it. The the okay. guy who did the walk. Uh, and I also want to just throw in there that it doesn't look like a hook grip either. It looks like a legitimate, like, support grip. Um, and it's pommy.strength, P-O-M-M-Y dot strength on Instagram. So I, but I don't have his regular name. But, yeah, longest walk with the Denny Stones in 150 years, 8 feet, 2 inches. Wow. Nice. And then the... Uh, got to be some walk. Yeah, dude, it looked painful. Um, yeah, but the the idea with the who's the next to clean the inch? Literally, just something that um, popped in there when I was writing notes for the show today, and nothing more than that. I just thought uh, it would be something cool to talk about. So, who do you yeah. guys think the next person to clean the inch would be? I got. Uh, you want me to go first, or? Sure. I don't even yeah, know if the guys. Yeah. I don't know if he's training for it or not, but I, I'd actually go with Thomas Larson. I can oh, okay. That. That's yeah. the name. Why say that? Any particular reason? Just because um, seeing the the clean work in particular that he does with like Bob Zilla and and all of that stuff, um, it it just makes me think it's in his wheelhouse. He's at least definitely training the movement, and uh, I mean, I just it just fits in my mind. He lifts the inch. He does all that other stuff. I I think it's it's right out there for him, and we see him doing those type of at least those type of lifts anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, good. that's good. Thoughts. What about you, James? Well, I had two. Well, the first name that, that came into my mind was Lane, but you said Lane's already done it. So yeah, um, he's he, the next, he's been on the list for quite some time. Oh, my bad. But uh, the next mm. names that that I thought of were Joe Sullivan, and I thought of uh, Timmy Butler, and I thought of Luke Raymond. Those are, those are cool names. That would be very, very exciting to see those guys do that. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. I, I know. I, the reason I mentioned Tim is because Tim is always doing cleans with, uh, you know, that 135 bell he has and, like, you know, other other types of cleans with blobs. So it seems like a, the type of feet that would, you know, be one of his uh, his, his, his lifetime goal type feats. You know what I mean? I can see that being on the list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and Joe Sullivan, because Joe's another guy whose stick bar is good. Um, he's a powerful guy. And you got to be, obviously, to, to clean the inch. Uh, he's He's got a background in, in, in uh, uh, power lifting and, and I want to say strongman as well, right, Joe? No, not strongman sport. Not strongman sport. No. Um, no. Uh, strongman in the sense of like, you know, obviously. The old time strongman. Yeah. Yeah, all old time strongman. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's ever bent anything, but the dude's got extremely strong wrists. Really impressive yeah. stacker work too. Um, okay. So, so the other name that I thought it was 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 Luke. And for a few reasons. Number one, Luke's got very strong shoulders. You know, he's he's athletic. That helps. 
Um, and I want to say, I'm, I mean, you guys, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I want to say that his short little pterodactyl arms actually help. Or not uh, oh, I could, T-Rex arms. His little T-Rex, T-Rex arms help. Yeah. yeah. You know what, I totally didn't clean? even... I totally didn't even notice that you said pterodactyl. We could have gone through it <laughs> with the call and not even that never would have even caught my attention. But, uh, same, same for me, actually. <laughs> well, I said pterodactyl because I was thinking about that bug in my kitchen that time. <laughs> Still on my mind. No, but Luke's got like the shorter arms, and, and I want to. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but to me, just kind of going over in my head, it just seems like that would be somewhat advantageous. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know, but you know, I could just I could see him doing it. I know we've had extensive talks about the size of Luke's deltoids too, so so you know, I feel like that can't hurt. You know what I mean? And and he just seems like an all-around strong guy. So I mean, I could see him doing it. I think I don't think the um, I don't think the forearm length would would hinder him at all. Definitely don't. Um, okay. And he and he has practiced the the movement with the let's see, um, he he has no problem getting our our steel shot loaded um, globe dumbbell with like an inch sized handle to shoulder height. He has no problem with that whatsoever. It's the catch that is that is uh, the the big thing for him because it has a tendency to flip over very quickly and just smash you. So wow. it's it's yeah. not easy to contend with, but um, <clears throat> that would I would yeah. listen. It would be it would be totally awesome uh, if it was any of those guys and any of them wanted to try it on my dumbbell, which is um, which has like a great handle. It's a little bit light, and uh, you know, it's it's really it's really a nice bell to try something like that. They they would all be welcome, even. Even uh, Timmy Butler, so <laughs> even Timmy, yeah. <laughs> well, I would I would think that Aaron Corcoran is another guy who, you know, just because because of the fact that he's just so damn explosive, I, I feel like he'd be another guy who would be a contender for that type of feat if it's something that he worked for, you know. You know, I think Aaron. Out of out of all the guys you mentioned, Aaron might have the best whole body strength. Like Aaron is very very dense and very very thick, and and he's put up some amazing numbers in the, in the power lane. The thing that I think yeah. would stand in Aaron's way is Aaron has like sub eight inch hands, so yeah, I it know. would be it would be very demanding on him to pull the inch dumbbell with that kind of speed and I'm not saying he wouldn't ever be able to do it. I'm not sure what his uh what his training goals are, but we all know that he's one of the you know, most intelligent grip guys out there that is able to build anything that he puts his mind to. So I'm sure he could, you know, fabricate his own tools to get him there. Yeah. And, and, you know, another name that came to mind, though I haven't seen him at all lately, is uh, Yuha Harju. I thought about him, and I thought about Gil Goodman. So He was working on Gil. Yeah. I was just going to throw out Gil, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I think he's got well, the explosiveness to pull something like that up. You had said Thomas Larson, and I was like, man, I don't know. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Thomas yeah. <laughs> Out of the one, out of everybody that um, that has been brought up, Thomas has the biggest hands. Like he has some enormous hands, and yeah. Gil, Gil has hands that are my size. So um, the hands size are not going to hold those guys back at all, by any means. Yeah. Um, I'm probably gonna catch like some heel pops on this one, meaning people are gonna react to me, react to this like I'm a bad guy. But Why? I was just going to say that the next guy to clean it was going to be Brian Shaw. Um, oh, I, yeah. You know, I was thinking of – I wasn't even thinking in that. Yeah, you know what? Nor was I. <laughs> yeah. You guys were thinking grip guys. Like, like that's – and that's, you know, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I was just thinking, like, the next reasonable person to do it would be, yeah. would be just someone enormous 
as long as they uh, – dude, I just think that Brian Shaw could do that if he wanted to. Oh, yeah. To. You know what I'm saying? Especially if yeah. he had – Especially if he had my bell, um, it's just his, with his hand size and the grip on the right bell, plus the fact that he was able to—I know, I know it was continental in the way that he got the inch dumbbells up into position on the on the incline bench, but you know he was able to control those very well, which leads me to believe he would not have a problem with the erratic nature of an inch dumbbell clean. So, yeah. you know, that process of of turning the bell over and testing it and allowing it to settle into position, I don't think would be a problem for him. So, you know, that may be the obvious, the obvious choice, um, you know, but I have to wonder if a guy like Larry Wheels could, could end up producing, you know, the strength needed to do it within a short amount of time if he had access to the bell and the interest to try out the feet. That, that no, would be the only so. thing holding him back would be would be the interest. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't put anything I, past Larry Wheels. I mean, I'm. I, you want to talk about catching flack? I mean, I'm going to say it. I don't think that Larry Wheels has the grip strength to do it. Well, um, I know that he lifted the inch when he was over there with uh, Half Thor. With Half Thor, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah and that fell. Yeah, that and that bell looked like it was a pretty slick bell. So um, I just I don't know. It's possible. I just I I could see him it's just the way that he constantly like breaks marks that he already set and you know new PRs and things like that. My gosh. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, he's always on the upswing. So he he just yeah. needs to put the the time into it, and I think he's too focused on other things. You know, I I don't know that there's anything about that that would really what he would necessarily gain out of it, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a huge thing to us, but to him, it's not, it's really not probably if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, well, so. I think, I think someone like Chad Woodall could do it in a short amount of time. If he had an inch and put his mind to it, as far as I know, Chad no longer owns an inch dumbbell. Uh, Paul mm. Knight owns his inch dumbbell, so he no longer has it. So we're, you know, we're kind of, I'm kind of like speculating based on, you know, past potential, but, I mean, Chad Woodall, as far as I'm concerned, is, is probably the strongest grip guy in the United States. So, you know, he's he's really just not showing up to contests anymore and um, yeah. just not competing and putting on videos. But, he, I mean, he'll every once in a while he'll send me a video, which is just just blow you away when when yeah. he puts it, when he sends it. So um, he's just not a, uh, he's just not a public figure. And I think that he could probably do that, do that feat if he wanted to and had the bell. So let me ask you something, because you say he's sending you these videos. Does he not want you to talk about them with people? Like the, the specific feats that he's doing? Oh, we lost him. Jet? Oh, we lost Jet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think he just dropped yeah, out. Yeah, it almost sounded to me that, that – you know, what he was saying is that Chad will share those videos with him of the feats of strength, but he doesn't want anyone to really know about them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely thing, how it comes across. I yeah. was, I'm curious a little of that backstory too, you know, because he was a fellow that, you know, he was climbing the mash monster ladder, doing all kinds of great things. And he just kind of, kind of dropped out. And for, for whatever reason, you know, Oh, sounds like he's back with Mega Day or something. Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. So I've been kicked off four right. times now. I'm moving on a different phone now. So, uh, oh, just my goodness. Ask you, uh, Chad uh, didn't want me to discuss stuff. Yes and no. Sometimes he asked me not to share stuff, but, for instance, when he did the when he did the double old-school York pinch and then the farmer's walk with him, he said, yeah, go ahead and tell people about it. So, yeah. Um, but there's been some other stuff that he sent me that is, is really, really insane stuff, and I definitely believe. I mean, for instance, one time, one time he showed me this video where he was taking a circus bell, which I think had a three-inch handle, and I'm not sure how much it weighed, but I think most circus bells with a three-inch handle weigh in weigh in at about 120 pounds. And he was doing okay. like if you imagine standing in a bent over row position, and then doing a cross body hammer curl. So it was almost like a cross between a spider curl 
and a hammer curl. But he was oh doing the hammer curl across his body with 120 pounds on a three-inch handle. That wow. is otherworldly lifting. But, um, yeah. I put that curl into August of Arms one year, and I literally called it Woodall Curls because I have never seen that done before. And we just, you know, I just used uh, regular dumbbells for it. But when I did it, like a 70 was very, very hard for me, very hard on a regular dumbbell. So, wow. Um, yeah, it was – now, he didn't do it super strict. But, you know, he had some body body English going on there, and I think probably his hand was butted up against the bell. But still, dude, over 100 pounds. Oh, yeah. It's extremely strong, extremely strong. Yeah, when I hear stuff like that, all I can think of is, here's a guy we got to get on an arm wrestling table. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, that – And I think he, he actually – he arm wrestled, um, helped me out with the guy's name. He was, like, 500 pounds, and he, like, beat everybody. Steve Dean. Yeah. yeah, I armed this with Cleveland before, actually. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a picture What's out the there. Name? Cleve Dean. Cleve Dean. Okay. Okay. I've um, heard that. There's a picture out there online of Chad Woodall arm wrestling Cleve Dean, and Cleve makes uh, Chad look like you know a regular sized individual. It was well, pretty. Gotta, pretty... Look, Cleve started arm wrestling in the 70s, though. I mean, you got to realize, like, you know, that's a I'm just saying, like, the, the learning curve for somebody like Chad in two years, you give me two years with Chad, I think he's, he's you know, he would have been holding his own with Cleve if not beating Cleve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, no doubt. But, uh, no doubt. But have you guys ever talked about Cleve Dean's hand size on the show before? No. Never met him. Oh. And really never. We could talk about that sometime because um, I, I, I have heard that he had extraordinary hand size. I would venture to, to, to guess that in terms of people who have ever had their hands measured, his would be the biggest of all time. Hmm. Wow. And I think it would be a pretty safe bet. Well, hold that thought because I think we're – I think that's a separate topic that we can talk about. Okay. Maybe just extremely yeah. large with individuals that we know yeah. of. Um, you know, yeah. maybe we can talk about that and uh, sometime when we do like a short call or something. But that's that's pretty yeah. cool. I absolutely love that kind of stuff. There's a there's a word for that. What is that called? The the measuring of people's hands and things like that. Is it, I have uh, no idea. Oh, Luke can tell us. There, it's it's a it's a word like, and then there's relationship between like someone's, you know, cranium size and then their their hand size and like most people's feet are about the same length as their forearm. Yeah, that, yeah, that I've heard of that before. Yeah. Yeah. Polymetry. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of correlation. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, Alan, I know you had to go at some point. Are, you, are we, like, keeping you from the coolest no, thing the other? I got a things – are, things are still sort of okay. I just – I got a new puppy yesterday. And, um, oh, cool. So and, – and you know how that is with puppies. They're like human babies. So yep. my daughter's my daughter's watching him, but it, it's in case things get a little out of hand if I got to deal with something quick, like if yeah. he's going to use the bathroom, you know. <laughs> right. So he's been a sport. So I'm I'm okay yet. If if we need to carry on a little longer, that's fine. What did you name the puppy? Iron Mind. Hugo. <laughs> Hugo. Hugo. Oh, what okay. kind? What kind of dog is it? He, uh, he's a German Shepherd. Oh, oh great! Great dog. Yeah. Um, no, I had to have. Uh, we were talking about it being a, a crazy week and everything for me. My my dog I, that I've had for 13 years, we had to have him uh, put to sleep this past oh. week. And uh, yeah, you know, he was having some 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 disc dysfunction in his back, and it was causing you know paralysis more or less in his hind legs. And oh, we just couldn't. And I'm him. sorry to hear that. Yeah, you know, Very sorry it, to hear it, that. It, it's been rough. And as as most people probably know, when when dogs go, they tend to take pieces of you with them. You know. Absolutely. And, uh, so, yeah, this was, uh, anyway, one of those things we kind of needed to do to sort of, you know, make ourselves whole again. So, yeah, right. right. But, uh, yeah. yeah so, cool. so yeah, we've got those, that challenge ahead of us now. <laughs> so he's been a lot of fun so far. But, well, that's uh, good. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm bummed out now. 
Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was. It, like I said, it was. It was tough, but uh, things things are improving. So, you no. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, and that's the thing. It's like you know, you 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 lose a dog, and like it, it, it still stings now and again. It, you know, even years later after something like that, but. Uh, the way you feel certainly just after it does dissipate after a while, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it is, you're right. They do, it, it takes a piece with you. I think that's a really great way to, to describe the experience. Yeah. 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 The unfortunate experience. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh. Now, and you got a, you got a nice picture of you and your family with the dog. With our, with our, with our new puppy. Uh, with the, with old? the old, with the, with the previous. We we do. My wife put together a, a collage and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, on Facebook, you know, a bunch of different ones of them through the years. So, oh, so it's up. Uh, it's up on Facebook. That's uh, yeah, yeah. She put it on her on her thing for everybody to see. So yeah, kind of the, Do me a favor. Send me a good one. Oh, I'll Just do that. I'll do that. Like, send it to me. Sure, sure. You bet. So, cool. Yeah. Well, well best trying to direct it to, to something better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I, we're going to be working on some topics coming forward, and uh, I think that'll be a real cool one with the hand size thing. Um, maybe we'll, we can talk about like like large handed people that we've met and uh, any other large hand stories, guys. I, I know I've got one or two that I could that I could think of. As far as like large handed individuals, so um, I I've only several. actually met like like maybe I guess I guess now that I've traveled more, I've met more. But up until like 2010, I'd only met like five people in the world with bigger hands than me. So um, oh, I've, wow. I've got a few stories to share there, big hand stories. So I'm sure you guys do too. So we can we can we can do that in a couple couple episodes and. Um, also, man, we are really getting close to 100 episodes, so I'm interested in hearing suggestions for, like, a special 100th episode that people would like to like to see, so that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Awesome. Yeah, special guest or something, maybe. <laughs> be a good one. Yeah. Cool, man. Anything else, James? No, I think uh, I think I'm good for this week, guys. Well, travel safe, dude. Um, I'm I'm all I've covered everything. Alan, the show's yours, tough guy. All right. Well, that is it for episode 92 of this week in grip. I uh, hope everybody liked it. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll uh, see you again next week with another one. Talk to you later. <laughs>